Hey, Pam here for loudguitars.com and we're here at NAMM 2014 with Analog and Alien and doing? Jack. Jack's going to walk us through the pedals. I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Good, good. Having a good show. Enjoying it here in California. A lot warmer than it is back in New York right now. We feel you. Trust me, we feel you. Cool, cool. So I can give you a demo of the pedals, walk them through. Just um, start with the fuzz bubble, I guess. Sounds great. All right, let's go for it. Playing through uh, a Gibson. Gold tone is the clean sound. Let's get to the overdrive sound of the fuzz bubble, the first stage. At this setting, it's very, uh, it's very light. As we turn up the ear control, we get a lot more gain. And it really cleans up nice like when you actually just pick a little bit lighter, the touch, when you lighten up, the circuit lines up too, just like a, uh, an amplifier would. It's modeled after a 1959 Fender Bandmaster, a Tweed Bandmaster, and it mimics that amp pretty well. The other side is uh, a big fuzz. At this setting, you can hear the full blast. The cool thing about this fuzz is, is that we could take this haze control down and it out, now it turns into more of a distortion pedal. I could take the input down a little bit more and now we get even more of a distortion, like it's less, you know, the fuzz is gone now. It's a really good hard sound for rhythm, so you don't have to go from a you know a heavy amp to a fuzz. You can actually get this back lighter. And then go to a heavier heavier guitar sound on the other side too. So it's pretty versatile that way. And these switches are tone switches. They roll off 120 cycles down at about 4 dB. So if you're using a guitar that has one pickup in the rhythm section and it's a little woofy sounding, these will actually take care of that for you. But for the most part, you would leave them up to the right. Uh, the next pedal is the Alien Twister. It's a buffer, built-in buffer, which helps with impedance issues if you have a lot of pedals in your chain or if you're using a vintage Wawa. You can use it independently of the fuzz, so you can use it with other pedals that you might have in your chain, different models, or you could use it with this fuzz here. This is the Alien. It is modeled after, or was inspired by, I should say, a uh, Cesar Diaz Texas square face. But it does a lot more than that. So at this setting, if I can get to it. That's the square face setting. But what I could do is, is I can actually roll the stability control up. And now what happens is, is that the attack of the, of the uh, string is actually a little bit tighter and more articulate. The, wa the wave, the sound wave actually starts to square off. So you get more bite and more attack from the string. If you don't want to get the full fuzz effect, you can turn the input down and there's a lot of output gain in this. At 10 o'clock you're at unity gain with this. But I could turn the input down, keep the stability up, and it goes from a fuzz to more of a... Overdrive, and I can turn it down even more and increase the output game. And it's a real good Texas blues kind of shuffle sound as well, all from one pedal. Just depends on how you want to manipulate the uh, the controls. This is the Rumble Seat. We introduced it last year. It's uh, really built around Rockabilly. Rockabilly inspired it. It has a Rumble Drive. But the Rumble Drive is modeled after a Marshall 69 Plexi. You would normally think it would be like a blackface with a, with a um, rockabilly sound. But we found most of the musicians and guitarists that work with us in our recording studio already have an amp like that or something that's similar to it. So we thought we'd take this pedal out a different door by introducing a Marshall flavor to it. And then it's followed by a delay, which is standard for rockabilly, and a reverb as well. And the reverb is modeled after a Fender Blackface, which we feel is the best sounding reverb that you can possibly get in an amp. So at this setting, with the gain down, you don't get much overdrive. In fact, 
There's the bypass. You get very little. It's almost like a clean boost at this setting. And this is the tone. You get quite a large sweep from the tone. So you can find the spot that just sounds best with your guitar. And if you want to increase just the gain just a little bit, let's see if I can get to it. Just get a nice bite to do rockabilly songs with. Because the distortion in that is not really over the top. But the trick with this is, is as you start to open this up, it starts to dime pretty quickly. And it kind of gets you right into rock and roll land. It's good for punk, surf, rock. Once you get to about 2 o'clock, typically what happens with that amp traditionally is the volume kind of stops there. You don't get a rise in volume. It kind of ends there, but when you go past it, you get, you get that heavy Marshall saturation. So it's a very versatile overdrive. You're not limited to just like a, a crunchy rockabilly sound. You can easily slip into hard rock, punk, even heavy metal a little bit too. The delay goes from 26 seconds delay time all the way up to 620. It's a very clean sounding, bright delay. But it's not over the top. It has a mellow tone to it. Uh, and you have a delay time. You have a repeat for the amount of repeats you want to have in the delay. And you also have a mix control. The reverb, again, was modeled after a blackface, a Fender blackface. It's either off or you just simple one simple control. You can get a lot of reverb out of it. And when you overdrive all of this together with just a little bit of gain, get some delay going. So the delays stay nice and tight, the repeats are there, you don't lose anything, you don't lose the low end. Sometimes when you switch a delay in or a reverb, the low end in your overdrive that's in front of it will go away. Not the case with this pedal. The next pedal we just introduced this year, it's primarily for bass guitar. It's an uh, alien bass station. I'll switch out actually to the bass guitar to demonstrate it. Okay, so um, this is the alien bass station. It's a tri effects pedal just like this one is, but in this particular one, we have a limiter, an amp generator, which simulates an Ampeg B15 amp, an old bass amp, and a gamma fuzz, which is very good low end fuzz that doesn't rob the bass of its low end like some fuzz pedals do. It stays articulate and full. Actually, actually sounds a little bit more fuzzy at lower uh, string levels, lower pitches rather. And as you climb up the scale, it actually starts to get a little tighter sounding, so it's neat. And it sounds totally different when you put a guitar through it. So the limiter is really cool. It's modeled more after a, a, a professional compressor, like an LA-2A or a Joe Meek. It does not over-squash the bass signal. It controls it just right without killing it. Some limiters do. They just squash the signal down to the point where you lose total dynamic range. But in this case, you could do full chords. This is without it. This is with it. You have a ratio of 2 to 1 to 10 to 1, the sensitivity control, which is like a threshold. And what's very important about this is, is if you're using a bass with active pickups, a lot of times it's hard to control. So what you want to do is most bass players actually have to start to turn the bass down, and you don't want to do that. By turning the sensitivity control down, it'll actually tame that hot output, so you can leave your bass alone, and your bass will be very friendly, whether it's going to the recording console or recording direct or it's going to other pedals in the chain that might get distorted as a result of the bass just being too hot. This will correct that and it won't kill the sound and it'll still be able to control it. The um, B15 circuit just gives you that nice warm full sound you have two that that amp is known for. You have a, a bass control and a treble control. They're independent of one another. You can get a lot of really heavy duty low end bass with that, you can see it die out or hear it die out. The treble is very smooth and articulate. I could back it down too. It's never brittle sounding. The gain control at this setting, the, with the gain totally off, the bass sounds very smooth, very rich, just adds a nice flavor, a nice dynamic and tonal texture to it. As I increase the gain, you can get some bite. I can, I can actually turn the output down. That's quite a lot of output. I could back that off. 
And that'll just, it tames it, it brings it back down so you, you get back down to a nice full rich sound again. You just move this. The gamma fuzz again is interesting for a bass. You got a lot of low end punch, a lot of articulation in the string attack. It just has an input control and an output control. The voltage is fixed internally inside the, the box itself. So if I turn the input down, it's like turning the input, the uh, volume control in your guitar down, and I can turn the output up. I go from a nice, I go to a nice smoother, less fuzzy bass sound, but it just gives the bass a little bit of ad attitude without putting it over the top. That's it, that's the bass station. Awesome, what a great array. Thank you. Thank you for talking with us. Have a good show. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for walking us through it. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks, Pam. Sign. I have a